Welcome to Green is Good, raising awareness of each individual's impact on the environment and helping to create a more beautiful and sustainable world. Now, here's John Shigarian, Chairman and CEO of Electronic Recyclers International and Mike Brady. Welcome to Green is Good, and it's so great to be back here in studio with you again, Mike. Yeah, hard to believe this year is uh, off to a pretty good start, and there's still a lot of people that are deciding that they want to take better care of themselves. They haven't made that first step yet, so I think you're really going to enjoy the first part of today's show. We got Jay Cordage coming on. He's the pioneer of the whole juicing craze for the last 65 years. So listen to this commercial and then come on back to Green is Good. If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so honored today to have the juice man, Jay Cordich, who's on the phone with us from Bellingham, Washington. Jay, welcome to Green is Good. Hey, listen, it's my honor to be on with you guys. Hey. You, you guys are the motivators, you know? Green I, is Good. Hey. Great title. Hey. I just got to tell our audience right now, you are tr such an inspiration. You're the man who pioneered juicing. You're 87 years old. You are you're, you're, the strength and the vitality in your voice is just amazing. How did you get started with this whole juicing concept years ago, Jay? Well, you know, I, I've been an athlete all my life. I played football for University of Southern California, of course, high school football prior to that. Then I played three years in the Navy for all-star Navy teams during the Second World War because we were all, all, everybody that was going to college, if they were, you know, physically fit, were in the Navy or the Army or the Marines or something like that, right? Right, right. Okay, so I was in the Navy, played football for, at, uh, in the wintertime for three different naval teams uh, around the country, and it was really, really fun. So uh, I've been an athlete all my life, you know, and, and, but all, all during that time, even when I was in the barracks and everything else, I was still making juice because I had my own juicer. I was kind of, everybody considered me kind of a nut, you know, a cuckoo guy. <laughs> <laughs> look at those carrots he's, he's bringing into the barracks. Look at that. Look at the celery. Wow. <laughs> look at the spinach and the parsley and all that other stuff, you know? What? But that, that's my mode of operandi. I take care of my body first and foremost. And what I do, it's a very simple thing. I'm not a, I'm not a genius, you know? I went to University of Southern California, played football in the Rose Bowl for them. When, I might as well say this, when Michigan beat us 49 to nothing, you know? Wow. Wow. But, hey, this is, but at least I played. You know, the biggest crowd ever in the, in, in the L.A. Coliseum right. was uh, when uh, Notre Dame came out to play us. They tied us 14 to 14 in about the last six seconds because we had them beat until that time. <laughs> How many you know? people? How many people were there? How? I think 108,000 people 108, or something like that. 108,000 people. Wow. So yeah, wait a second. Yeah, like... 108,000 people. 108,000 people. They had to put extra bleachers in and everything else, you know. Wow. And it was a heck of a game. It was a great game. So tell us, Jay, let's step back for a second and, and step, you know, and, and, and obviously you grew up in Southern California, San Diego, then, you went, then you're a Trojan, you went to USC. When did you have that epiphany? When did you have that, wait a second, I'm not feeling all that great. I got to change my lifestyle. I got to do something different. And then you got into juicing what how did you get into the whole well what, what happened to me was you know i'm like any college kid yeah i was drinking soda pop i had hamburgers white bread nobody ever told me that white bread was beached with chlorine dioxide one of the deadliest gases so my body couldn't couldn't live up to that they couldn't take that and and uh it kind of tore down and uh where it hit me uh was in the bladder the okay. urinary bladder and okay. i start uh, pardon the expression, but I, I, I start peeing blood, you oh, know? Wow. And when that happened, I went back to my medical classes, looked at my medical books and everything else, and it was a urinary infection of some kind. Right. So uh, I, I knew, I, I had read all the, all, all the books on some of the masters, Dr. Norman Walker and all the other guys that, that, that guided me along, you know? So I said, wait a minute, uh, uh, all this information that I have that, that, that taught me what to do and how to stay healthy for a long time, uh, I better start studying. So I went back to Max Gerson's book, you know, on, on cancer therapy and everything else, and wow, I found out it, what juices to put into my body. And the number one juice basically was carrot juice and carrot and spinach and parsley and stuff like that that I never paid attention to, you know? Wow. And that was way back in 1948-49. Got it. So that so that and I'm was, still here, and you're still here. So you were about 25 back then, and now you're 87 years old. So now you've been doing this most of your life. So talk a little bit about 
you know, your the journey, you know, how you've inspired millions of others to follow you and to get healthy again. When did you start really promoting what you were doing and writing books and selling juicers and all that other kind of great stuff yeah, that you do? Yeah, well, first of all, I had to take care of myself, right? Right. When you're in dire straits, you try to recover. That's right. And so I, I, start, I start reading, I just just jumped into it, read all my old textbooks and read everything, which didn't talk a lot about juicing. It talked a little bit about foods and things, you know. Okay. Uh, but then I, I got together with, 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 uh, with, with a couple people that I knew, and they were into natural health and everything else, and uh, I start reading about uh, Pablo Arola and all these other guys that, that helped train me, you know. And Dr. Max Gerson was Dr. Albert Schweitzer's doctor, and he wow. was my doctor. I went to him first thing when I, when I had that because I knew enough to go to a natural kind of a guy, you know. Gotcha. Wow. And, and so, and so uh, well, I figured, hey, if, if Dr. Albert Schweitzer went, went to Gerson, uh, man, I, I got I to gotta start uh, thinking about this and be serious about it, you know. Gotcha. So I went into it, and... Um, and the Gerson company t- 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 taught me all about juicing and why, why juices and, and how it's only – and they have a slogan. It's the ju- and it's my slogan, too. Right. It's the juice of the fiber that feeds you. You see, wow. whatever you eat, the body has to convert. I don't know if you know physiology of the human body, but the body is a juice machine. Whatever you eat, the body has to turn it through peristaltic action and all kinds of variations of intestinal juices and everything else. And all the body is doing to the food you chewed and swallowed is breaking it down to liquid. Ah. You know, because I... it's only the liquid, or if you will, the juices of the food you've eaten that go through the intestinal villi, through the portal vein, into your liver. Wow. And then from there, it's transposed into the bloodstream, and it circulates all over the body. All these nutrients that are broken down from the food you've eaten. That's so if it was dead food and food with chemicals, those chemicals are going to are going to be into the cells of your body. So I was only on natural juices, natural plants, where all life comes from. You know, if you think about it, after we leave the air, you think about it a little bit. Yeah. If you took a magic wand or anybody a magic wand and waved it over planet Earth and say, all plant life be gone, how would you like to know that every one of us die in a very short span of time? And you say, wait wait a minute, I don't like fruits and vegetables anyway, so uh, I like my steak. Well, where are you going to get the steak from? Right, right. If there's no vegetation. Nowhere. <laughs> ah, you see? So uh, plant life uh, is the power of life on this planet. And it, without plants or in the algae and everything like that, you know, you wouldn't be able to breathe. There'd be no oxygen for us to breathe by. You're right. Right? right. That is something really to think about. In case uh, you've just tuned in, on the phone with us right now from Bellingham, Washington, is Jay Cordage. He is the father of juicing, and you've got a great website, Jay. In fact, I'm on it right now. Are you on the website? It, yes, it's jaycordage.com, J-A-Y-K-O-R-D-I-C-H.com. And you quoted about the juice really uh, being the uh, – give the quote again because it's right here on your website. It was, it was perfect, and we need to hear that again about the fiber. Well, you know, it's, it's the juice of the fiber that feeds us. Okay. We all know that. And when, uh, whatever you eat, whatever I eat, I don't care if it's a cake or, or bread pudding. I don't care if it's, a, if it's a candy cane for the Christmas season. I don't care what you eat. The body then has to digest it and break it down. And all the body, in essence, is doing is turning it into liquid. If there's no liquid in it, you're, you're only going to get the chemicals out of it anyway. And the body is a juice machine, primarily. So the whole purpose of the peristaltic action of 22 beats a minute is to break everything down to liquid. So when all that food gets down to the third part of the small intestines called the ileum, only the juices, only the liquid part of the food you and I have eaten go through the, through the uh, portal vein into the liver, uh, into the villi, uh, to reach our bloodstream to be fed to every one of our 100 trillion cells. Wow. It's amazing, you know. So- and by the way, all of that is in my book that's out there, okay. The Jews and Live Foods, Live Bodies. You know, and it's, it's being sold all over. I mean, it hit the bestseller of the New York Times bestseller list. So, you know, so, uh, and, and then if everybody out there listening, if they can't buy the book or can't find it in a bookstore, right. uh, all you have to do is to go to jcordich.com on your computer, and there's recipes they're beautiful recipes. I mean, I've got some of my best recipes on there. And also a little, a little information on how to remove, and this is vital for every one of you listening out there, how to remove 
poisonous surface sprays that sprayed in, on all of our produce. If you, hey, if you guys came down to, to, to the, the valleys in, San, in, in California, uh, you would see crop dusters. You'd be driving your car up Highway 101, and you'd see a crop duster way out there on the right-hand side of your car. And look to the left, there's another crop duster. And then behind you, there's crop duster. And all they're doing is spraying those fields periodically. Well, a couple times a week. Jay, Jay, we are actually we we broadcast our show from Fresno, California. So hey, we, great place! I th- just gave a seminar there not too long ago. We heard you were just here. We missed you, but you're so right about the crop dusters. So let's let's give our listeners a little taste of your juicing genius here. Why don't we talk about a little bit, Jay? What kind of juices do you drink on a daily basis, and what's better for us, fruit or vegetable, and why? Well, they're they're two different entities. Fruits are your body cleansers and quick energizers. Vegetables are your body builders. Oh. Now, they'll build the cells and tissues and glands and organs, but, but there's a little overlap there, too, between fruits and vegetables, okay. you know? And, I, boy, I've got a great recipe sheet. My, my wife just handed it to me right now. <laughs> it's it's uh, from our, my old juice man company. And I've got recipes like carrot and apple juice, which was my favorite of all time. That, and that was put on that by Dr. Max Gerson. By the way, do you know, you, you, do you know who Dr. Max Gerson was I've heard of him, but share share with our listeners. Yeah, he he was uh, right out of New York. He, he had a place right on Park Avenue, New York, and then of course right now his daughter's carrying on a lot of his work. But he he people came from all over the world just to be with him to, to teach him about juicing, you know. Ah. And so uh, he's the one that taught me a lot about carrot apple juice and all the rest of it. He's the guy that put me on juices anyway, to begin with. And he's got a great book out, uh, A Cancer Therapy. He was Dr. Albert Schweitzer's personal physician. Got it. So, yeah, so, I mean, so, the guy must have had something, you know, obviously. and I went to him because of that. Anyway, I'm still here, right. and that was way back in the 40s, you know, that, so, that I went to him, and so he like, put me on juice, and so, I've been drinking juices since, what, like, 48, 49, so t- 50 or something so like that. For, you know? So, like, today but, and yesterday, what kind of juices did you drink? Like, what did you drink this morning? What are you going to drink tonight? What did you drink yesterday? Just so our listeners get a little taste of, like, the, what, what, what someone like you is doing. Well, right now, my wife just placed a small tumbler of juice right in front of me, and she just made it in the kitchen, <laughs> okay. and all it is is I can see I can see it's starting to separate a little bit on top, and all it is I can see it's a lot of, veg- a lot of uh, leafy greens in there. I know there's parsley. I can see the parsley in there, okay. and spinach, and carrot, and celery. Okay. And probably some apple too, you know. Got it. So the, the now that that's my favorite drink. It's it's called potassium broth: carrot, celery, spinach, parsley. And I and to make it taste better, sometimes these things aren't the greatest tasting. Right. So you add an apple to it, you know. Right, right, right. Got but it. That's what you do. You kind of temper it down to make it. So I'm gonna take one gulp, and you guys can hear me. Here's the okay. here it comes right to my mouth. Okay. Nah, she should have put more apple in this one. It's very strong. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of greens in there. Okay, but these are the things you live by. Right. Now, you know, later on, it's Christmas time. You have a cocktail. Uh, some guys go watch a ball game. They have a bottle of beer, and you know, and there's a lot of cakes and pies and Christmas cookies out there right now. Hey. Okay, a family tradition. You toast in the the holidays right now, but you know what? What's that? Right after that's over with, you start drinking these juices. You know, they're okay. gonna they're gonna they're gonna simplify everything. They're gonna take care of take care of the poisons. They're gonna help you eliminate the toxins, and they're gonna bring the nutrients into your bloodstream. Remember, it's only the liquid part of food, the food, the, the powers of the life of plant life, where all life starts from. That can penetrate through the intestinal villi, through the portal vein, into your liver to feed your 50 trillion cells. So let's talk you about know? that. You know, Jay, a lot of people do want to, after the holidays, they, they regret a little bit of their overindulgence. So can people lose weight uh, oh. while juicing? Absolutely. That's what, that's, there's some great juice programs on how to lose weight, of course, you know, okay. uh, your vegetable juices in particular. And, and when you're drinking these juices, folks, if you're listening, take a mouthful of, of, of juice and swirl, swirl it around your mouth for about 30 seconds. And that'll that'll uh, help you uh, relieve the saliva from the salivary glands, so that you can break down you can break down all the all the food factors that Tylenol help break down 
all the nutrients, especially the proteins, so you can have an absorption factor immediately. Don't just gulp your food because a lot of the juices, because a lot of a lot of it will go through you real fast. Okay. There's an amylase called ty. That's a tylin, P T Y L I N, and that's what that's what the body needs to help digest your food and absorb the food value. Okay. You know, and we manufacture it. So uh, you want to take that first mouthful and the second mouthful and swish, swish you around. Something, so it sounds something like this. You know? And, and there's that enzyme called tylen, P-T-Y-L-I-N. And it's that tylen that breaks the complex carbohydrates down to simple starches and sugars for utilization. You gotcha. see? Yeah. Yeah. And, Jay, one it's not thing. not that hard to do. No, and I think one thing, too, when you, when you swirl your juice around in your mouth for 30 seconds, you're also satisfying your taste buds, aren't you? That's what's happening. The exactly. taste buds are stimulated. Uh, the body's going to say, hey, I've got the complement of nutrients in my body. I don't have to eat a lot of food. I've got most of it right here in this mouthful of food I'm eating now or that juice that I'm eating, uh, consuming now. It's, it's so easy. I'm, you know, I played football for University of Southern California, you know, a uh-huh. long time ago uh, my, in my school days. I'm right now the same weight, about 185, same weight, wow. exactly the same weight. And I'm going to be 89 years old right now, you know? Wow. wow. I'm the same weight. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about you. You played at USC, and a lot of our listeners are athletes or people who like to you know, work out and stuff like that. Is juicing something good for athletes also? I think it's one of the greatest things you'll you'll ever have happen to you, especially if you're a sprinter. I was a nine seven sprinter, nine nine usually ten flat, you know, for a hundred. And uh, I've got bad football knees now from all the right. wear and tear on my knees. Right. But I became a, a terrific racquetball player after my college days, you know. And that stop and go on the racquetball court really, really put pressure on my knees. All the cartilage was worn out and everything else. But I keep supplementing my body with all these juices. I keep doing pineapple juice. Pineapple juice, take the swelling and the pain. And listen, any of you that have any pains in the shoulders, like the bursa's all inflamed, right. your knees like mine, uh, the, uh, the ankles, whatever, back in the neck and everything, remember, pineapple juice has an enzyme. Everything is predicated on enzymes called bromelain that takes the swelling and the pain out of the joints. Isn't that nice to know, especially you, you ex-athletes? It's so great to know when you're limping around with pain because you, you've damaged your cartilage. It's so nice to know there are things you can do, and plant life can alleviate that. Pineapple juice. Wow. The pineapples that grow right out in, right out in David Murdoch's pineapple plants right out in <laughs> Hawaii. You just go ahead and start making juice out of pineapple. Tastes totally different than pineapple juice in a can. It's fresh, it's alive, and it's changed. And I, and I make a combination, what I do a lot, uh, because of the Thailand and the grapefruit, the quinine of the grapefruit. I make grapefruit and pineapple together. In a beautiful combination, but 50-50. Wow. Now, orange and pineapple taste a lot better, but that grapefruit is a kind of a bitter taste. Man, is it terrific. It's quininic acid. It'll take the pain and the swelling out of your joints, along with the, uh, the, the, the bromelain of the pineapple, which is a di- digestive enzyme, I may add, you know? Uh-huh. Right. Jay, Jay, I also uh, I, I picked this up years and years ago, but uh, a friend of mine who, who I probably read your book and was a, a, a devotee of yours, told me before I went in for some knee surgery, he said, anytime you go in before surgery, drink uh, the week before, drink as much pineapple juice, eat as much raw pineapple as you can, and then as soon as you can, when you get out of surgery, continue. It really helps promote the healing, reduces exactly. the swelling. Exactly. So because, I know my because, friend had to be following your advice. He probably did. But, but uh, see, what you have is, a dig- is an enzyme called tylen, P-T-Y-L-I-N, and it starts the breakdown of complex carbohydrates and the simple starches and sugars. Magnificent for you, you know? I mean, these are the things that, that keep us going. Keep us, you know, I'm still, I'm still at my age. But I'm, I'm just about 90 years old now, you know? Wow. And with my age right now, I play against guys that are 18, 20, 25 years old in racquetball at the racquetball courts. So, you know, even though, I have bad, even though I had surgery on my knees from all the football uh, past days, you know, uh, uh, it keeps my pain uh, down to a minimum, if at all. You so, know? so you're saying, so it's, it's fair to say then to our listeners out there that juicing definitely can help a person live longer. And better. Oh, I think so. What do you What do you think? Your body. Let's 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 be realistic. Right. Let's just look at Look at the way you should look at it. Did you know that the greatest juice machine in the world, better than mine, yeah. is your body? 
No, I never thought yeah, of it. Yeah, when way. you chew your food and swallow it, the body then becomes a juice machine. All it's with a peristaltic action of 22 beats a minute, all the body tries to do is separate the juice from the fiber. So when all that hodgepodge called chyme, called ch- C H Y M E, gets down to the small intestines, oh, w- w- you have your villi, uh, it's only the juice that permeates through the intestinal villi, through the portal vein into your liver to reach your bloodstream, and then it's transferred via the bloodstream from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, all over the body, to every one of your hundred trillion cells. That's the way you're fed. You are fed by the juices of the food you put in your body. So if you put something in that has chemicals in it and and additives in it and and things like that, then you can also have those chemicals delivered to your cells. You, you, every one of you listening out there, you become the cannery. You make your own juices. You take your foods and you get the pesticides off. You, you wash. Oh, I've got a recipe sheet that's sensational that'll tell you how to remove 100% of all, all, your, all, your, all, your, all your chemicals off of food. Not, nothing ingrown. All surface sprays can be removed. Simple. Just easy. Let me mention it to you while you're at it. Sure. All your listeners can sure. pick this up. Sure. All you have to do to remove poisonous surface sprays. Here, I'll read it right off my, 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 my recipe sheet. Fill your sink full of cold water, okay? Sure. Okay. Let's just put a stopper in there okay. and get it about halfway full at least. Add four tablespoons of salt. Take a lemon, cut it in half, and squeeze the lemon with your hand. Let the lemon juice fall into that salt water. Okay. And that salt and lemon combine together to make a diluted form of hydrochloric acid. Then you soak your fruits and vegetables between five and ten minutes, depending. If it's leafy greens, five minutes. If it's things like, like pineapples, if it's things like apples, give it ten minutes, you know. Then you take all that food out of there and rinse it under your cold tap water. You will remove 100% of the DDT, the arsenic, the cyanide, the parathine, and malathion, and all these chemicals that are sprayed on your produce. You see, this is the way to have pesticide-free foods get into your body. Now you're a champion. Wow. Now you have uh, organic stuff. Now you have food being penetrated to every one of your 100 trillion cells, and you're built with live, live foods by, by the good Lord hey, who put all these foods in the body to feed us all. You see? Well, Jay, I love it, and I want you know we're down to about five minutes, and I want our listeners to hear from you directly. Is it expensive to start juicing, and how can they get started? How can and, and, and then I want you to also share a little bit the subtlety between juicing and blending. So so this way you can uh, they can get going. They can listen to the show, and they can all start following Jay Cordich, who is the man who pioneered juicing. Go on, share with our sure. listeners how well, to get going. L- let's put it this way. A blender is terrific to have in your kitchen. Okay. Uh, my wife has one. She makes all kinds of concoctions with it and everything else, like salad dressings and what have you, you sure, know, sure. purees and whips and dips and peanut butters <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. But there's a big difference between okay. a juicer and a blender. Okay. With a blender, uh, with the blender, you have, you have uh, all that food... Uh, Emulsified together, okay. and you haven't separated the yeah, you haven't separated the, 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 the juice from the fiber. So okay. it's all in a hodgepodge together. And if you just drop the vegetables or pro fruit or whatever uh, grains, you just drop it in a liquefier or blender, if you will. Okay. All you're going to get is a bunch of mush on the bottom, and it's going to probably even clog your, ju- your your blender up, your liquefier up. You know, right, right. Uh, you, so you'd have to put a, a one, one. I used to sell liquefiers years and years ago. Um, you have to. I always say, put one part liquid, one part solid food. The, uh, the liquid goes in as a base of suspension, but the blades run at about twenty to twenty-five thousand revolutions per minute. And there's usually four cutter blades that are crisscrossed in there. That's a hundred cutting strokes per minute. Hundred thousand cutting strokes per minute, and the friction involved almost kills all the life force. Life force are enzymes, you see. So a liquefier isn't going to do that. It's great for peanut butter. It's right. great for making jams. It's great for making salad dressings. and everything. But it can't make juice because everything is together. There's a reason for juicing, and that's this. To separate the juice from the fiber so that when you do drink pulp-free juice, right. you have 100% of the food value pre-digestedly in your bloodstream, reaching every one of your 100 trillion cells within minutes. If the pulp and the fiber is present, now the body has to digest it. 
It has to break it down. It has to go through the digestive tract, and it takes days to get it through there. And then, and then, and then it's only a small percentage of the food value. You see, most of it is still evacuated in the fibrous walls as it goes through you in the bathroom, in the toilet. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, when you juice, and this is the precise reason for juicing. The reason for juicing is to separate the juice from the fiber, Ah. made fresh. So that you, when you do drink pulp-free juice, bingo. 100% 100% of the food value is in your bloodstream now, right now, pre-digestedly, starting to reach every one of your 100 trillion cells, and the vitality and strength and power is there. Oh, I'm telling you right now, what a ball game you'll be on once you start making these juices fresh. <laughs> and, how- and you don't buy them out of cans and bottles. And how I don't care where you go and you buy something out of a can or a bottle. It could be the greatest health store in the world. All your supermarkets, everything else, everything in the can or a bottle is sterile. It's a federal law to run it through a cooker Jay, to, you... kill, to kill the enzymes so that can or bottle <laughs> will have shelf life. If they didn't do that, every single can or bottle that you'd ever buy in a supermarket or a health store, you would be returning after a couple days because it would all be sour and putrid and decayed and toxics and everything emitted from it. You see, because it's live food. Gotcha. Huh? Jay, Jay, we're but down. You changed it. You made it, made it a toxic food. When you juice, you separate the juice from the fiber. And when you drink that pulp-free juice, it's automatic. Jay. 100% of it gets into your bloodstream pre-digestedly in a matter of minutes, and it's carried to every one of our 100 trillion cells. This is the way you should be fed. You see? Well, Jay, you've been unbelievable today. I mean, you're, you've inspired not only Mike and I, but you, all of our listeners out there. And, and I want all of our listeners to, to follow Jay's instructions and, and either get his book or go to his website, Live Food, Live Bodies. You go to www.jjaycordich, K-O-R. D-I-C-H dot com and, and read what he's uh, talking about and buy his juicer and buy his book and get on the program and follow the man who pioneered juicing, Jay Cordich. You are truly living proof that green is good.